to do things a little bit different this evening. Uh, we planned on singing and sharing some from Cat Camp over the Peterman's God, and uh, then some of our other ones that went to camp had plans. Uh, uh, but we'll catch up on that. So I uh, may be a little bit shorter tonight, amen, but uh, I'm not. I, I, I want to see God work in you, don't you? Yeah. Amen. I want to see what He'll do in our lives. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs 25, verse number 16. Proverbs 25, verse number 16. Amen. I'll put the offering plate out afterwards if you'd like to give any time and offering. Appreciate everyone that's here tonight. Amen. Praise God. The Word of God says, Proverbs 25, verse number 16. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as sufficient is, is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Amen. The first part sounds good, doesn't it? The second part doesn't sound as good. Amen. But there's a balance for what Solomon is saying. He said, As thou found honey, eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Amen. Let me say this tonight. Uh, I, I believe it's possible, and maybe you've even experienced it, that every Christian uh, 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 possibly at times can fall into a funk. You know what I'm talking about? Falling into a funk. You ever been there where you fall into that funk? Amen. I, I realize that 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 uh, as as humans, no one is able to float on cloud nine seven days a week. Would be nice, wouldn't it? Do you like that illustrious feeling when the adrenaline is rolling and, and when happiness is just uh, abounding? Amen. Uh, but but sometimes. Uh, Unfortunately, if we're not careful, we can start to enjoy that state of funk. We can. We can enjoy that state of funk. Sometimes it's easy even to take up residence there in, in just that state of funk because we realize that, hey, I, I can't live on cloud nine. I, I can't always, I always be, be up there uh, uh, enjoying every moment and, and living life on a drill and a, and a high. But, but it's unfortunate when people make their residence and their address and their life in that place of funk because they get to a place where they're living in the polygraphs and they're living in misery. And unfortunately, when people live in misery, no one likes to live in misery alone. So they start calling for everybody else. Hey, I'm miserable and I want you to be miserable with me. You know anybody like that? You know, you get someone who's got a bad spirit and a bad attitude, and all of a sudden they start complaining. They try to drag as many people in it with them. And so, uh, misery, they love to, to uh, when someone gives them their sympathetic ear, and they pour out their litany of misery of everything that is happening to them, and, and their struggles, and all their afflictions. And if you're not careful, there are some people who claim to be Christians who believe that this is the norm of life to live in. I believe from the Word of God we're going to show you tonight that that's not the norm of life. And that is not where God wants you to live. Although you may occasionally get in the funk. And although there may be times when things don't go right. Amen. God does not desire for us to live in that place. And so Christians need to shift and get the different mindset in their mind. Because living in that place will shrivel your soul. It will wound your spirit. It will weary your body. And, and, and you know what it tells everybody on the outside? It tells everybody on the outside. Oh, woe is me. And this walk with Jesus is so dark and so drab and they look and they think well there's no light that can even penetrate that wall of darkness that that individual has so Solomon has some good words for us as believers to help us understand where we need to live he said this has not found honey eat so much as is sufficient for thee Solomon says a lot of things here in Proverbs. 
He talks, uh, in, in chapter number 25, he talks about uh, kingdom problems. He talks about the dross and the silver. He talks about false witnesses. He talks about boasters. He talks about growling women. He talks about unfaithful men. He talks about those that are backbiters, to name a few. And, and if you're not careful, uh, uh, the church world can become this. It can become this. But then Solomon says this tucked in there. He said, have you found any honey? Have you found anything that's desirable and enjoyable? Have you found anything that is sweet? Have you caught sight of any delightful thing about living for God? Amen. Did you, st did you stumble upon some shreds of happiness and joy? If you did, Solomon said, it's like honey, take it and eat it. Praise God. This Christian walk, I believe, should be pleasurable. Amen. I understand that there are positives and there are negatives. Uh, there are uh, in, in the aspects of pleasure. Amen. Some people love pleasure more than they love God. Some people love the pleasures of sin more than living and waiting on the righteousness and the will of God in their life. They're so engulfed and engaged in that that they would rather enjoy the pleasure of sin for a moment than wait for a real giant, real nugget of happiness to come uh, from the pleasure of serving God. But the Word of God says that God pours out His pleasure like a river in Psalms chapter number 36. Amen. In Psalm 16, the Word of God says His sweet pleasures last forever. I'm telling you that there is honey in serving God. Amen. We used to sing that old song. There's honey in the rock, my brother. There's honey in the rock, my friend. Amen. I believe that there's honey in the rock of Jesus Christ. And Solomon said, if you found any honey, eat on it. I want to tell you tonight that unlike many people's view for God, for God amen, he does not deny us pleasure. Amen. He does not deny us honey. Amen. He does not deny us good things. Amen. When you look at the Word of God, it doesn't say uh, if you encounter any honey or happiness, any joy or any sweetness, stay away from it because it must be simple or holy. No, Solomon says this. He said, Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. You know what he says, Brother David? He said, you found some honey. You found some sweet things, Brother Justin, and the things of God. Eat, Brother Doug, to be satisfied. Brother Josh, eat of the honey of God. Uh, if you eat too much, you might get sick and make your belly upset. Yeah, there's a balance. Amen. But grab the pleasures of serving God, Brother Dennis, and eat of it because there is pleasure, there is honey in serving God. Amen. I want to ask you, what are you looking for in the kingdom of God? Amen. Do you view it as beauty and as promise? Amen. And as honey? Or do you view the kingdom of God as a wasteland? I believe that tonight, amen, there are many who view it as a wasteland or else they would be here seeking the honey of God. But I believe tonight the reason why you are here is because you realize that there is pleasure and there is honey in the kingdom of God. And you want that sweetness. You want to eat it. Uh, think about this. The, the, the children of Israel, uh, they wandered in the wilderness and they spent a lot of time and they spent a lot of energy complaining. You know it takes energy to complain? You know, if someone constantly complains, use your energy for something else. I understand that there are rough times. I understand that sometimes things get bad. But, but to constantly live in a life of complaining, amen, they knew that their departure from Egypt, God had done it for them. They knew that God had promised them a land of milk and honey. God had promised them many things, but somewhere in the desert heat and in the barrenness of the wilderness where they were walking, they could not see the pleasures and the promises of God, so they begin to complain. Life isn't always going to be about the promised land. God does have a promised land. 
God wants us to get there. But sometimes we have some wildernesses. Sometimes we have some journeys to get there. Amen. But we have to hang on to the promises of God, knowing that He promises us a land full of milk and a land full of honey. Brother David, I believe this. Many people look at the promised land and they say, oh, that's a type of heaven. I disagree. I believe it's a type of the victorious Christian life that we can live on this side of heaven, Sister Stacy. A land of milk and honey. Amen. And if you found any honey, Solomon said, why, why don't you eat of it? Enjoy it. What has God done for you? They murmured about the water. They griped about the food. They ignored the rules. Uh, they danced around a golden calf. Amen. When God told Moses, tell my people that I will give them a promised land for their inheritance. It's an abundant land. It's an agreeable land. It's a rich land. There's going to be plenty of room that they can grow. Isn't that awesome, Brother David? Amen. God not only gives you a, a, a land, Brother Josh, but He says, I'm going to give you enough land that you can grow. Amen. You can have things and, and, and you, can, you can multiply. Amen. God had promised them that but he said this. He said, but you're going to have to overcome the Canaanites and all the other ites in the land, Sister Beth, if you want the milk and the honey. And somewhere in the middle of it, they're on the threshold of the promised land. And, and Moses sends in 12 spies. And two of them come back. And Brother Josh, they said, man, there's pomegranates and there's figs and there's grapes that I've never seen before. They're, they're big and they're awesome. we, we got to go. we got to take it. I want the honey. And all of a sudden, Brother Dennis, where two had given a good report, ten come back and they begin to murmur. Man, yeah, there are big grapes there and there's pomegranates and there's figs. But let me tell you, there's giants in the land. And you know what, Sister Stacy? Those giants are so big that we look like grasshoppers in their sight. Sister Tina, they can step on us and squash us. But that's the problem. Too many people get to complaining. Too many people look at the problems and the situations more than the abundance of God. And all of a sudden, they're stepped on and squashed like a grasshopper. Listen, when we begin to look at what God wants and has, there shouldn't be anything to be afraid of. There shouldn't be anything to make us a coward. Amen. There shouldn't be anything that keeps us from the promises of God and the sweetness of what God has for us and all the victory. But somewhere in the middle of it, here are ten. Sister Tiffany, they like the bitter herbs. And they're still eating on that. So all their bitterness of their words begin to squash out all the sweetness of them. They're too soft. God help us tonight to claim and stake the promises of God that are sweet. To close our ears to what everyone else may have to say that would be discouraging and to simply trust God. I want to look at a little bit of honey for just a few moments this evening. It's interesting, in the Word of God, we find some stories about honey. By the way, one of mine uh, that, that I think about is, is about a young man named Samson. Samson's an amazing uh, young man. You remember his birth was told to his parents by an angel. And, and so here it was that, that Samson went down to Timna and he fell in love with the girl. Now, right or wrong, we're just leaving it right there. But he fell in love with this girl. And when he falls in love with this girl, Brother, Brother Justin, he begins to make his way down to Timna. Now I want you to think about this. Every married man that's in here, think about this. Amen. Whether you've been married and you're, or you still are married, maybe it's good for us to think about this. And all the wives snuggle close to their husbands. <laughs> but you remember, Samson falls in love. And so all of a sudden, Brother Doug, he's on his way down to Timna. He's not thinking about anything else, Brother David. He's just thinking about getting down there, seeing that young lady who he fell in love with, and he's making wedding plans. He's about to get married. He's excited. That's an exciting time in life, isn't it? And so on his way down to Timna, all of a sudden, Brother Dennis, a big lion jumps out in front of him. You know what? He wasn't thinking, but he wasn't thinking about 
not carrying a weapon, Brother Justin. All I was thinking about was going down there and seeing that young lady, getting things worked out, that, 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 that they can get married. That's what he's thinking about. And so, as he's there, Sister Peter, what does he do? All of a sudden, the Bible says that he grabs the jaw of that lion. The strength of the Lord comes upon him, and he tears a lion's jaws apart. And then he begins to beat and pounce on him. So the next thing you know, Brother David, something. Sister Beth, you didn't go down there and say, like, oh, whoa, do you know how much I love you? I had to kill a lion to get here. He didn't go to, to, to our parents and say, oh, this was terrible. I, I slayed a lot. There wasn't really any talk about it. It's all over. It's all done. I'm going to go see the love of my life. Now, it took some time for, for the agreements to come together between uh, how they were going to work their marriage out between families. And so, Sister Tina, that carcass of a lie was just beginning to rot away. The birds, the vultures come about Josh and eat of that. Amen. There's worms and, and the hot sun. There's not much left. And so he's finally going down to get married. And as he goes down to get married, he notices something. He notices the carcass of that lion. And he goes over to it, Brother David, and he looks inside. And in there was a swarm of bees. But there wasn't just bees. He didn't focus on that. But there was some honey that those bees were in there producing. And all of a sudden, he gets him a big old chunk of honeycomb. And he begins to eat of that. He gets enough sister Stacy that he takes down the Timna. He gives to his future wife and to his in-laws. All of a sudden, he just begins to share. Let me tell you something tonight. Amen. There was something that he shared that was great. He didn't share about the, the roughness of killing the lion, but he did share the sweetness of the honey that he found in his past victories. Amen. There's times that we as believers, we get in the molly rods and we tell everybody about everything. Amen. Forget about the battles. It's discouraging. But begin to look back at past victories and find some honey from it. Amen. And begin to eat of it. Amen. Think about how God saved you. Think about how God healed you. Think about how God delivered you. Think about how God brought you through. There's sweetness and honey in that. And all the blessing of David as we fellowship and we share with others the sweetness of the honey. Oh, God help us tonight. Amen. To share the sweetness. To share the sweetness. Listen, you look at the life of Samson. And his life was not really all about victories. But I see some honey sprinkled throughout. Didn't walk out with the girl from Timna. We know the story of him and Delilah. And though he felt prey to her tricks. Blind did his eyes sear out, but there is his grinding at the middle. God provided him some more honey. Listen, our life is not about perfection. There's things we go through, there's situations sometimes of our own creating that we make that are difficult. But thank God for the honey he provides and the waves. Solomon said again, has thou found any honey? Eat so much as is sufficient. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for how He helps us. Amen tonight. Let's not live in funk, but let's live in the sweetness of the honey that God provides in the seasons of our life. See, God's perfection makes up for our imperfections. All of our victories come because of Him. And because He gives the victory, amen, He gives the honey. Amen. Why don't you just go ahead and enjoy it? David said, How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Amen. Enjoy the honey from the things of God. Let me share another story with you real quick. 
you'll find that during the reign of King Saul, the Israelite army, they were up against the Philistines. And the king, King Saul, was trying to muster up the favor of God. He needed God in an army of 600. The only ones who even had a spear were two men, Saul and his son Jonathan. And so they were fighting a battle uh, uh, that uh, was very difficult. Saul brings uh, the Israelite army to the place where he grew up there in Gibeah. And we find that his son Jonathan and his armor bearer sneaks off. Now they're going to fight against the Philistines in a place where there's a valley, mountains at the side. And he said, you know, if they look at us, the Philistines, amen, they don't need to know that there's just two of us. Amen, let's go up and let's fight. We know that they went up and they fought, but let's, let's, let's get to the root of where I'm going tonight. That Saul had caught a fast that no one was to eat, but Jonathan found a honeycomb full of honey. And he said, we need to eat. Oh, we can't, Well, Justin. Saul said that we can't. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're going to fast. We can't eat. What did Jonathan say? We've got to eat. God has provided, and we need strength that we can fight. Amen. And Jonathan, uh, he didn't hear that the food was forbidden. Amen. In the thick of battle, he ordered them to eat the honey from the honey. He scooped it out. He said, try some. Amen. We need this. Amen. And this, instead of display our, our, our scars and, and our wounds, amen, sometimes we just need to find the honey and eat it. Amen. It gives us strength for battle. David, or Solomon said once again, hast thou found any honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. I believe that God wants us to eat of the honey. Let me ask you tonight, what are some honeys that you can categorize and say that I can eat from? Maybe you think of your life there was a bad habit. God gave you power to break it. Eat from the honey. Amen. Maybe you can think of a time where God spoke to your heart and you can overcame evil with good. Eat from the honey. Amen. Maybe you can think of a time when the doctor gave a diagnosis and it looked grim. Amen. But God moved. Eat from the honey. Amen. Maybe you can think uh, of a time where, where, where you really didn't feel like doing something, but the, the Spirit of God prompted you and you did it anyway. And, and you found that God was in it. Amen. Eat from the honey. Amen. Think about the Word of God and, and how that God has, has spoke to you. Eat from the honey. If we're not careful in our life, We'll get in that funk and we'll get in the molly drops. Life becomes unbalanced. Sometimes we just need to eat from the honey. Complaining only leaves a bad taste in our mouth. What does honey do? Oh, it leaves a sweetness, brother David. Hey Amen. Let's eat from what God has given. Really, I believe this tonight. Instead of looking at what we don't have, God says, but look at what I have to do. You. Don't look at the giants. Don't look at the Canaanites. Don't look at every... I want you to look at the grapes and the figs and a land that has room for expansion. Amen. But all of a sudden, they were still eating on the bitter herbs of complaining when God wanted to satisfy their mouth with the taste of honey of His promises. Amen. Uh, sometimes uh, people can put a guilt trip on you for savoring honey. And, uh, but, but why don't you offer them some? And, and, and maybe they'll say, uh, I can't trust God, brother. He's let me down. Let me give you some honey. Wouldn't you like to have some honey, brother Doug? How about giving some honey for that situation? Found any honey? Eat on it. Amen. I'm thankful that God provides honey. What did David say? He said this. He said, taste of the Lord and see that He is good. Eat of the honey. I'm getting ready to close. Are you going to put the piano?
I think about this tonight. Maybe you're here and you say, my life is far from perfect. How can that be tonight? I'm not here tonight saying that sin is acceptable in the sight of God. Sin is not acceptable. But sometimes we fumble. Sometimes we've made fun our address. Sometimes we've been guilty of complaining. Sometimes we've been miserable. How about it? But God doesn't want us to live there. God wants us to eat of the honey. And they said, but how can you just say what you just said? Well, listen to me. That young man, Sam, and Tim going down to Timna, God provided for him honey. He provided for him honey when he stood and killed thousands of Katina with the jawbone of a donkey. But Brother David, he fell into sin again. But grinding at the mill, he realized, I was wrong, God, and I repent. Have mercy upon me. And God came by me by His Spirit, leading my way upon Samson. If you turn to the New Testament, you'll find that Samson's name is found again in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. The Hall of Faith. You know why? Because his life is marked by faith. The good news, Brother Doug, is he didn't live in misery complaining. He didn't live in messing up. But his life is marked by living on finding the honey and eating it. Tonight, I don't know where you may be, but I simply want to ask you this. Have you been chewing on bitter herbs? Has your address been permanent and living in the funk? Or have you been eating from the honey, a place where God blesses and abides in a great way? Tonight I want to invite you to eat of the honey. I don't care if you're diabetic tonight, you're able to eat of this honey. It doesn't affect you. You may say, but what's the going on a diet tonight? This honey don't affect you. Amen. It will only make you Amen. And full and complete spiritually. So tonight, I wonder if we could gather in around about this altar. Amen. And as, Samson, as, as Solomon said, Has thou found any honey? If so, eat till you are satisfied. Tonight, there may be some carcasses of victories in the past that you need to go back by and grab some honey from that. Amen. Eat of it. And then when you leave, take it home to your family. Take it home to those that you work with and those who are around you. Amen. Let's give honey to this world. Amen. As a Christian, amen, I want them to see that I've been eating of the sweetness of God. I've tasted of the Lord and I've seen that He is good. Would you come tonight and taste and eat of the things of God? Come find some honey and eat till your soul is satisfied.